look what I just found. I think we need to check this out. Hi, I'm Lake, the Motor Oil Geek, and this bottle of Mobile One Classic 10W30 says it's for vehicles from 1951 to 1996. So what's so different about this oil that makes it special for vehicles from that time period? Do vehicles from 1951 to 1996 really need a special oil? Let's find out. To get started, we're gonna send samples of this oil off to both speed diagnostics and high performance lubricants for physical and chemical analysis. In a recent video, we analyzed both modern Mobile One oils and a can of vintage Mobile One. So we're gonna run those same four tests, FTIR, PDSC, KRL, and ICP. So we can see how Mobile One Classic stacks up to vintage Mobile One and modern Mobile One. So I have a confession to make. I'm one of the people responsible for creating high zinc oils. You see, 20 years ago, motor oil was really different than motor oil today. And that oil from 20 years ago was different than oil from 30 years ago. So what was different? One of the main differences was the level of zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate. That's hard to say. We just call it zinc or ZDDP instead. And prior to 1996, there was not a limit on the amount of zinc that was allowed in the oil. Now, technically, it's the phosphorus, not the zinc that's limited, but zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate, whenever you limit the amount of phosphorus, you're kind of limiting the amount of zinc. Again, it's easier to call it zinc, so we're just gonna call it zinc. But no, that was really limited is the phosphorus, not the zinc. Are you good and confused now? Good, let's carry on. But in 1996, the level of zinc was restricted down to a thousand parts per million. To be fair, that really didn't cause any problems during that time, even with flat tappet cams. Heck, in 1999, I went to the Kmart in Port Orange, Florida, and bought every quart of Mobile One 5W30 they had on the shelf. That thousand part per million oil finished 10th in the Daytona 500 without any abnormal camshaft wear. Now, six years later, you could not do that. In 2004, the API SM spec came out, which limited the amount of ZDP down to only 800 parts per million. That 20% change in ZDP level caused all hell to break loose with flat tappet camshafts. With API SM oils, you weren't running the Daytona 500 and not having abnormal camshaft wear. So in response to these lower zinc oils, things like zinc additives popped up and diesel oils became a popular alternative because they weren't limited in zinc yet. And Joe Gibbs Driven released our hot rod line of high zinc oils to counter the effects of these API SM rated oils. But the zinc level was only part of the problem. What wasn't widely known back then, or even still today, is that the detergent type and concentration also plays a big role in camshaft wear protection. Here's a quote from the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers magazine, TLT, back in August of 2005 that's quite telling. It says, even within engine formulations themselves, the presence of some detergent dispersant additives seem to have significant effects on the surface chemistry of anaware additives. That is, the active species in the anaware additive zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate and calcium detergent dispersant additives compete for the same surface sites. In English, zinc's trying to create an anti-wear film. Calcium detergents are trying to wash it away. Put another way, while zinc is important, too much calcium detergent presents a whole other problem, which we've covered in other videos. And since this channel is about science, not speculation, I'd refer you to SAE paper 2000-01-3553, where Lubrizol, working with 76 and Richard Childress Racing, discovered how 
detergent and dispersant additives do compete against ZDP and friction modifiers, which directly affects engine wear. One of the authors of this paper is Doug Jane, who is one of my mentors in developing the products at Joe Gibbs Racing. So this is an excellent resource for those who are interested. And we've already shown these effects in our previous video about diesel oils in gasoline engines. So what does this have to do with our Mobile One 10W30 Classic? Well, it says right here on the label that it's a high zinc formula and there's no API rating on the bottle. So the real question is how much and what type of detergent is in this bottle? And here are those results. So let's jump right into the calcium since that's the thing we were just talking about. And fortunately, this new high zinc mobile one classic has a lower level of calcium detergent it's in line with what we see with regular modern api sp rated oils gone is that high level of calcium that was typical with the old api sm and sn oils it's now lower less than a thousand parts per million which is good now this added back some magnesium detergent to help provide that longer drain interval, better cleanliness for the engine. So this is a well-balanced zinc and detergent package because it does have a higher level of ZDP. That higher level of phosphorus that we talked about is showing up here. This is really similar actually to what we've seen in a previous video with the Mobile One 1550. In fact, I think this is the same additive package as the 1550, but just available as a 10W30. And that's an interesting point because API will allow a higher level of ZDP on viscosity grades above 10W30. And that's probably why this oil was not API licensed. The ZDP level makes it unlicensable as a 10W30. That same additive package in a 1550 can easily be an API SP rated oil, but not as a 10W30. Moving on beyond having a good zinc detergent balance, which we know we've seen that now, that's good. Let's take a deeper look at two things, shear stability and the base oil blend. Now, shear stability is really important. Viscosity is the most important characteristic of any lubricant. As we can see, this oil is actually really shear stable. Many other oils aren't shear stable. They will shear down and lose some of that viscosity as the polymers are torn and chained. We actually cover that in a video called Viscosity Breakdown, and we'll leave a link for that in the description box below so we don't repeat all of that here right now. But the good news is this oil, after that 15 minute KRL shear test is showing that it's still in grade, so that's positive. Now let's take a look at that base oil blend. This label says it's a full synthetic oil, and what we can see in the FTIR trace is it contains alkylated naphthalene. Now that's a type of group five synthetic base oil. Now we're gonna cover group five base oils in another video. So I won't go off on a rabbit trail about alkylated naphthalenes right now, but we can see from this IR trace, that same alkylated naphthalene signature in this Mobile One Classic 10W30 that we also saw in the Mobile One Truck and SUV formula, as well as the Mobile One Extended Performance. That AN, that group five synthetic, brings in some unique characteristics that add to the performance of the oil, and we're seeing it in this formula. And looking at the Mobile One 15W50, we can see that same oxidation level new as we see in the Mobile One Classic 10W30. So it looks like they're using the same technology that's been proven in the 1550 Mobile One, but now they're offering it as a 10W30 instead. When we compare this Mobile One Classic to the other 30 grade varieties of Mobile One that we've used in other videos, we can see a pretty big difference in not only the additive package, but also that base 
oil blend. The old formula of Mobile One from the 80s definitely had a much higher level of calcium as well as a higher level of ZDP. So while the Mobile One Classic doesn't have as much ZDP as that old formula of Mobile One, the zinc detergent balance is actually much better. In fact, it's even better than the ESP formula of the Mobile One, and I'd say it's better than the regular API SP Mobile One. This one's interesting. I would really like to test this oil out with our flat tappet camshaft wear test to see how it ranks compared to the other oils we've tested on it before. We know that the Mobile One 1550 did a pretty good job, so it'd be interesting to see if this one can repeat that same performance. So now that we know what's in the bottle, the question still remains. Do cars from 1951 to 1996 really need a special oil? No. While this oil is really fascinating and I do want to test it out in our flat tappet camshaft engine, I already know from testing other modern API SP rated oils, that camshaft is completely safe. Thanks to the advent of modern turbocharged direct injection engines and the discovery that those higher levels of calcium actually caused low speed pre-ignition, modern API SP and SQ rated oils feature a lower level of calcium detergent. And over time, higher levels of wear protection have been demanded by API SP and API SQ oil specifications. That meant the additive companies, Lubrizol, Afton, Ornite, Infinium, the people that make the additives that go into every brand of oil in the world, had to come up with other ways of increasing wear protection because they couldn't just put more zinc in the oil. So adding something like MODTC, a molybdenum additive that works synergistically with the ZDP is actually better than just ZDP alone. Which means older engines don't really need a special oil. Now, I would love to find out, does that special oil actually work better? Well, we'll test it out and when we do, we'll show you those results. In the meantime, check out one of these and we'll see you next time.